Welcome to Digital Thread Bytes, a workforce development podcast produced by the Digital Thread Initiative team at Sinclair College in Dayton, Ohio. In this podcast, the team discusses the coming revolution in digital, highlighting digital transformation success stories and opportunities for learning. Here are your hosts, Elizabeth Generous and Jennifer Gravitt. Welcome everyone to the next episode of the Digital Thread Bytes podcast. Elizabeth and I are excited to bring you episode number five. And in past episodes, we have talked a bit about data and data on the shop floor, but how do companies actually use data? That's kind of the tricky question. And we know that drawing conclusions and applications from data, that is one of the toughest parts of using the digital thread. So we have with us today, Mike Eilers, data strategy and quality leader at Equifax. And he is here to maybe uncover some of the mystery surrounding data analytics. So thank you, Mike, for being with us today. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, we'll just start off with an easy question. Uh, Tell us a little bit about yourself and your role at Equifax. Absolutely. So at Equifax, I lead our data strategy and quality functions as part of the data and analytics organization. So uh, I was really excited to join Equifax since it is a data and analytics focused company. And as part of my role here, I'm responsible for understanding and analyzing the data that we have, that we use uh, in all of our products, as well as determining the value of other data assets that we might either go acquire or partner with other companies to bring into the fold. So really my main responsibilities include understanding the data that we have and how we might extract the most value from it. It's great, very, um, it sounds like it keeps you very busy. (laughs) Absolutely, and it's very exciting for me as someone who's interested in data and analytics because I'm constantly looking at new types of information, uh, new industries, new sources, Uh, so, there's plenty to learn as I you know, get to do my day job. Absolutely. And I'm just always so amazingly grateful for people to have the brain for that. And it's funny because um, you know, if I think about my journey, how I got here, it's not where I started. And sure. so it's interesting you say that because I know some people have different aptitudes for uh, different types of work. But for me, or in my opinion, people have a greater aptitude to understand and use data than they realize. Uh, I think we use it in our day-to-day lives much more than we really appreciate. And I started in manufacturing, and I think we'll get to that in a little bit. But uh, I I very smoothly transitioned into the world of data and analytics, and I think a lot of people can do the same. That's really interesting. Like you said, we don't realize how much we use it. If you take it away, we do. (laughs) That's right. If it stops working, we do. Absolutely. So you mentioned manufacturing. How did you actually get started in data? So I actually started my career at GE Aviation in operations. I worked on the shop floor, making sure that parts shipped on time, that we had the right capacity, uh, whether it was manpower or equipment to deliver the hardware that was needed for our customers. In doing this job, again, I used data much more than I realized in order to make decisions on which parts needed to be started, when we needed to start them, whether or not we needed overtime or we needed to purchase new equipment. And that really came to light exactly as you mentioned, Jennifer, when I entered a situation where I didn't have access to that data. I took a new role in a facility that was more research and development focused. And part of my responsibility was to help convert that into a more full-scale production facility. Because it was originally more research, They didn't have some of the typical systems that other GE shops had, such as an ERP system, a quality management system. They had outdated warehousing and inventory tools. So in order for me to do my day job of understanding where parts were in the line, how many parts we needed to ship in order to make commitments to our customers on when we would deliver hardware, it was extremely difficult to do that without access to any of that information. So I actually started each day with a clipboard and I would walk the shop floor and mark down where parts were, how far they had moved overnight, uh, if we had any quality issues, and then go about my day 
answer questions, try to do my day job. And then before I left at night, I got that same clipboard out. And I marked it down again, just so I knew where parts were in the line or how many we may have lost due to quality issues so that I could make decisions. So I had to essentially create my own data to make decisions because it, we didn't have it available. Through that experience, it made me realize the importance of this data and information. And I actually took a role at GE helping to solve that problem, which was how do we get data to the shop floor or to the people who need it to make decisions, whether it be through ERP systems, pulling information off the machines, setting up our quality management system so that they were integrated. And as part of that experience, it exposed me to data, how to capture it, how to use it, and how to make it available. So in that vein, what would your advice be for small to medium-sized manufacturers looking to automate or maybe to start on that digital transformation journey? Sure. My, my advice comes from my own personal experience. And that's really, I would recommend to start with a problem that you're trying to solve. So in my case, I was trying to solve the problem of how do I tell customers when I'm going to ship parts when I don't know how many parts are in the line or where they are. We also had a challenge when we were developing new hardware and new products to determine the quality. How many parts would we make that successfully met the quality metrics that we were looking for? So those were the two main challenges we focused on and that really drove our decisions. So if you start with the end question you're trying to answer, it can really help guide what data do you need to collect? What machines do you need to connect so you can start extracting information? What suppliers do you need to request more information from or set up an agreement to uh, get data from those suppliers? And then it helps guide how are you going to use that information? Because it can be overwhelming. There can be a lot of noise, but if you have a particular question or problem in mind that you're trying to solve, First, focus on that and then expand from there. Once you have those machines connected, you can start trying to solve other problems. Or you might realize we could use this blueprint in another part of the business or another manufacturing line to pull similar information. So kind of start with the basics, really. That's right. Just don't collect data for the sake of collecting data. Collect it so that it can help you make a decision. I like that. I think that applies in a lot of areas, starting with the end in mind, what's your desired outcome. It's a really good way to think about how somebody could get started. And you, because you want them to start, but you want them to also see results. That's the thing. Like you said, don't yep. collect it just to collect it. We really want it to improve something. Yep. You can start simple. Starting with a clipboard is collecting data. That was the simplest way I could get the information I needed. Start there, start with a whiteboard, start collecting information, then figure out how do I do this better or faster or more efficiently? How do I pull this same information from a machine or how do I embed it in the process that the technician is performing on their day-to-day -day basis so I can get that information in a more efficient manner? You don't have to jump right to pulling data right from a machine, real time, developing machine learning algorithms. Those all come when the complexity of your problem increases or the sophistication of your infrastructure increases, start with a simple challenge, start collecting data in a simple manner or using existing processes. And if that doesn't help you answer the question you need, expand from there, then dig a little deeper, go a little bit further to see if you can get the information you need to answer your question. That's terrific advice. It is really good advice. So one question that we're asking all of our guests is trying to get at the root of like the biggest problem. So thinking about our focus, the digital thread, your expertise in data and, and the work you've done with it over the years, what keeps you up at night? That's a great question. I think I have two answers for you. And the reason is when I hear that question, what keeps me up at night, it usually has sort of a negative connotation. So I'll give you sort of a, a fear I have and then also something that excites me, that keeps me up because um, the opportunity that's out there. That's terrific. Somebody's <laughs> going to put a positive spin on it. That's I right. love it. <laughs> uh, so one thing that, that does concern me that I think is an important piece to keep in mind as you're building out your digital threat infrastructure or your data literacy is this idea of cybersecurity. So if you are successful and you connect the dots 
in your manufacturing process or in your product development uh, and you create a digital thread, that is essentially a blueprint of how to make that part or that component or that manufacturing process. You know, in my mind, I'm going to introduce a new concept here that may or may not resonate with people. But to me, the digital thread leads to a digital twin. So that's the digital representation of a product or process, not the physical actual manufacturing or development, but how do you represent that digitally? If you have a digital twin, you can almost assuredly replicate a particular part or process. So cybersecurity is critical because if you do connect all these dots, you've essentially developed the blueprint on how someone else might you know, use that information for a nefarious purpose. So to me, that's a critical aspect to the digital thread is keeping that information secure or only sharing it with the people who um, you have a relationship with or a partnership with. I think on a positive note, what keeps me up at night and really gets me to go to work every day are all the possibilities, all the things that you can do with data. Honestly, I think a lot of the challenges we have day to day, the answers are out there. We just don't have the information or we haven't looked at it in the right way to get to the detail that we need or to find that answer. So, you know, the opportunity is there in most cases to solve the challenges we face on a day to day basis. It's just how do you get the right information at the right time to the right people? Like a massive jigsaw puzzle. You're just looking for the right pieces. Exactly. So much information and data is collected these days or generated that just falls on the floor. You know, if we're looking to solve a problem of, you know, why, why is our quality dropping off? I'm sure that information is in the machine or it's in the measurements or it's available somewhere. Just finding the right piece of data, right piece of information to help solve that challenge. That's sort of the quest that keeps me excited and keeps me going to you know, continue this journey in the world of data and analytics. I love both of your answers so much, um, yes. not just because you went with a positive spin, but uh, <laughs> it perfectly ties to next month. So next month, our guest is a cybersecurity expert. So thank you for tying together our podcast episodes for us, uh, making that job much easier. But also because I... I agree with you. The the data analytics part of this is what gets students excited too. So when we're talking about this ramp up into the the next jobs um, Mm -hmm. and and some of the anxiety that comes with these more technical jobs, framing it as a puzzle is a really great way to talk to people about this that might have anxiety about data itself. Absolutely. And I would say that uh, there are so many different career opportunities in this space. I think part of the reason the the idea of cybersecurity worries me is because honestly, I don't really know that much about it. Uh, There's an entire career path and professions focused on cybersecurity and I have awareness of it. uh, And I've talked to some colleagues and friends about cybersecurity and some of the challenges they face are so unique and interesting, but it's completely different than what I'm working on. And so there's opportunity for really all sorts of people to get involved and participate in the digital thread infrastructure, whether it's a data engineer, a data analyst, a cybersecurity professional, all all sorts are needed to make this successful. That's great. So people listening, like, okay, I would like to start on this, but where would be a good place to find resources uh, to connect with data and learn more about how to start or where, how to get better? It can be a daunting challenge to begin. So a few ideas I had are, first, don't take for granted some of the existing tools you might already have. The most common and most widely used data analytics tool out there, in my opinion, is Excel, Microsoft Excel. That's the starting point for nearly everyone. You may not realize it, but when you're working in Excel, uh, there's tons of opportunity to do data analytics, to explore information, and that's a great entry point. From there, you can utilize other tools. I mentioned before, one example is Power BI, also from Microsoft. It has great integrations with Microsoft Excel. So you can take an existing Excel workbook and just upload it into Microsoft Power BI, and it opens up a, a wide variety of new tools, data visualizations, charts, analysis that you can do. There are other data visualization tools like 
Tableau, which is one of the uh, most widely used in industry. Um, another one called Spotfire. These are all tools that I've used in my day-to-day -day career. Um, that's how I s really start any data exploration. You don't have to have a plan when you start working with data. Sometimes you just start throwing it on a board or throwing it in a chart and just see what sticks. If you're really exploring, um, those are some great tools to quickly just understand the data or information you have. I would also recommend um, taking an example from you know the real world. And when I was thinking about what's an example of a situation where everyone had access to information and had to make decisions. What came to mind for me was actually the Johns Hopkins Coronavirus Resource Center. So if you recall, early in March of you know, 2020, when there was a lack of information about what was going on, Johns Hopkins set up a website where they actually collected information from across the country and eventually across the world, and then developed a series of data tables and data visualizations that people could access, and they made it widely available. They pulled it all together into one location, presented the information in a way that anyone could access, and then use it to make their own decisions. Do I need to stay at home? Is there a certain area that's more at risk than others? And still today, it's a location you can go, pull it up. And now that we're all familiar with sort of the terminology and some of the information about the pandemic and the coronavirus, you can just explore that website because there's tons of information already presented in a way that you can start using it, looking at it, analyzing it, and uh, see what trends or details you might pull out for yourself or decisions you might be able to make or questions you might be able to answer. That's a great example real world example. It's like you just come up with this, like, hey, there's a need here. Like you walking yeah. around with your clipboard, exactly. throw data out there. Where are the patterns? What makes sense? You know, where are the gaps? So I appreciate that. That's interesting. And, and it developed over time. Mm -hmm. uh, it didn't start. If you go there now, it's a whole collection of different resources, but it started with a simple, uh, almost like a clipboard, right? It was how many cases were in each county or in each state. And then they expanded from there as people were using it to make decisions. They said, what's the next question somebody would like to answer? What's the next question? And they continued to grow from there. That's fantastic. Any follow-up questions for him, Elizabeth? He's given us so much great information. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, no, not a question, but a, a comment that we should get on the record. Uh, most people know if they're following this podcast that we tie this podcast to a workshop and following this month's release. So this March 1st release of this podcast on March 8th, we have the data analytics workshop and our facilitator, Karen Broadbeck, she has done other facilitations for us. She's going to actually use Excel. So it's great that you mentioned Excel because she's going to show us actually how we could use that fairly straightforward tool that we all kind of use in the background already that comes with Microsoft packages, how we can use Excel to, to make some decisions. And then if that's of interest to you, since we're Sinclair Workforce, Sinclair Workforce does trainings in Excel and in Power BI and Tableau. So there's a great resource right here that um, I can't resist plugging. Um, Absolutely. But yeah, so Workforce at Sinclair is working with local companies to do this too. Yes. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate all of your answers. Positive. What keeps you up at night, especially. That's a high bar. Yes, no, yes. no problem. I, how could you not be excited about data? That's what I always wonder. That is what keeps you getting up and going to work every day is what is possible today. Well, it was great to be here. Thanks for having me on. Thank you for listening. The Digital Thread Initiative team would like to thank Sinclair College, Prime Contractor Arctos, the United States Air Force, and our guests for walking into the future with us. If you'd like to contact Sinclair's Digital Thread Initiative, please email SinclairDigitalThread at gmail.com.